What's up everybody, this is your boy Malk with Mindset of a Hustler and today we got a very, very special guest, one of my good friends, NFL quarterback Mr. Kyle Slaughter. What's up man, how you doing? Doing good man, let's just uh, go ahead and get started man, tell us who you are, who is Kyle Slaughter, you know where you're from. Yeah, so uh, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Grew up playing football, basketball, baseball all my life. Um, went to Southern Mississippi. Uh, was a quarterback. They moved me to wide receiver. Transferred out to uh, Northern Colorado. Played receiver there for my junior year. Was the backup quarterback going into my senior year. Uh, an injury happened where uh, you know I was put in a circumstance to go in and play uh, in the first game of the season. And uh, played really well and just tried to uh, do my best, and that ended up giving me a shot to uh, perform at Pro Day and a couple combines and things like that that uh, got me a little bit more exposure and put me in a, a position to uh, be on the uh, training camp roster with the Denver Broncos and then played well enough in the preseason to get a roster spot with the Minnesota Vikings. So, right. um, you know, I've, I've been through uh, quite a journey. There's a lot more details than uh, just that, but... No, it's, it's been a fun ride. I've really enjoyed it. Met some cool people along the way. No, nah, man, that that's huge. Talk about that college experience that you had because you kind of glazed over it, but that's actually something really big that I don't think a lot of people would have the perseverance to go through. Or you say you, you yep. know, you're the guy in high school and then you get to college and you're a backup and you know, yep. you're, you're asked to, you know, be ready at all times in case the starter goes down. So kind of describe um, that, that feeling. Yeah, so uh, when I was at Southern Miss, um, I went through a an 0-11 season, 0-12 season, and uh, my freshman year, I uh, was redshirting, and that coaching staff that really liked me and recruited me got fired. They brought in a guy from Oklahoma State to be our head coach, right. and uh, he, for one reason or another, uh, didn't really like me at quarterback, so he moved me to wide receiver, ended up doing that for uh, two years or so, and then right around my redshirt sophomore year, he brought me into his office around final time and um, in the spring going into my junior year. And I'd been a starter for him all spring practice at a receiver position. You know, I was finally thinking it was my time. I was going to be a redshirt junior. Brings me in and tells me that I'm not good enough to, to play for him. Right. And um, no, it, that, that kind of hurt me a little bit. Um, and it, it made me, it really gave me a drive and motivation because I'm always one that wanted to prove people wrong. And, you know, to hear somebody say that to me. Um, so I, I, instead of quitting, I, you know, I, a lot of people probably would have gone that route, right. um, just because at that point I hadn't played hardly at all in my college career. You know, I've been through three years. I almost had my degree. Right. I was three hours away from graduating oh. and, um, you know, it, it was, uh, it was a tough decision to make to transfer, uh, transfer out to Northern Colorado. Once I got out there, I lost 45 credits. So wow. I essentially lost two years, um, of education, uh, towards a degree. And uh, get out there, and, um, you know, it was kind of, I was given a, a chance for a couple of weeks at quarterback, and then they moved me back to wide receiver, which was, um, it was tough for me. But, uh, you know, at that time, um, you know, I thought that I would get on the field there, but I, I went from playing a little bit at Southern Miss to not playing at all at Northern Colorado, which is not something that I foresaw at all. Right. And, uh, I remember after that junior year, uh, just being really emotional and just feeling like I, I, I'd wasted a year. Um, went into my senior year, I had to miss all of spring practice and summer workouts because I was making up class hours. Right. Um, because to be eligible as a senior, you have to have a certain number of, um, a certain percentage of your degree completed. Right. So I worked towards that, uh, did about 18 hours a semester and I couldn't fail a class or I wouldn't be eligible. Um, I had to come back to Atlanta to do an in internship to, uh, you know, move towards graduation. Um, so I couldn't be there in the summer with the team. So I get back in fall camp, feel like I do okay, but I'm the backup going into the season. And, um, you know, I, I just – something kind of hit me that, you know, I had worked all my life to, you know, be in a position to play, and finally I'm, I'm one play away. I've never been the backup. You know, I've always been third or fourth string. So I'm one play away from playing, and I, I figure that it's my last year. If I do get an opportunity, I want to make the most of it. I want to be ready. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I spend that week going into our first game just studying my, my butt off and um, working really hard on the game plan. And uh, Jacob Nip got hurt, our starting quarterback at the time, and 
I went in against Abilene Christian and uh, um, had seven touchdowns. So it uh, <laughs> kind of took off from there. Right. Um, you know, it, it was fun. I mean, I, I had a, a great time, a great experience. I mean, it, it was kind of a, it's a story of perseverance and yeah. adversity. And I mean, I, I tell people all the time, I've, I've failed more times than I've succeeded. Right. Um, you know, and I'm not ashamed of that. You know, I, I gave everything that I had um, in every situation that I was in. And I failed more times than I succeeded. But it was how, it, in the end, it was picking myself up after being kicked down, you know, probably 15, 20, 30 times, you know, right. all that disappointment, still picking myself up. Because um, there was no glimmer in, in that five years, there was no glimmer of success. I, I never had a taste of, you know, uh, I'm on the up and up. Like, it was all negative. So for um, to, to just really stick with it, you know, it, it kind of taught me a lot about myself that, you know, sometimes – you just have to work really hard for things. And sometimes you could put years and years into something and grind away and keep pushing towards an ultimate goal. Um, but if you keep pushing, if you're tougher than the things that life throw at you, that eventually um, you're going to succeed and you're going to achieve the things that you set out to achieve. So Absolutely. No, man, that's a great story, man. And I think something that describes you is you just have always been an underdog, I would say. And you always had yep. you know people that were telling you that you can't do it. And I feel like a lot of people – have those people in their lives, but they also find the people in their lives that they, that do support them. So um, yeah. tell us about the people in your life who are actually very supportive of you and how important they are, you know, when you've got those naysayers and those doubters in your ear all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you – I mean, it only gets worse. I mean, it's only gotten worse from the time that I've gone from northern Colorado <laughs> to Denver to Minnesota. I mean, you read all the time the people that say – I mean, I just read something five minutes ago that said that Minnesota's backup quarterback situation is <laughs> – very bleak you know so I mean I, I still deal with it and it's just something that you know I, I've always been one that likes to prove people wrong but I'm always I'm also someone that likes to prove the people that believe in me right right um you know there was a certain point in my life where I didn't have a lot of people that really you know told me when it comes to football you can do this because I mean after four years a sane person would probably think like you know, he hasn't played for four years. There's, there's no way. Like, right. you know, how could he be overlooked by three different coaching staffs and have 17 different quarterbacks play ahead of him? Wow. Um, you know, it, it, I, I probably wouldn't believe in that person either. Um, but so there, there was a point in my life when it, when it came to football that I was the only person that really believed in myself. I mean, my parents were very supportive. My family, my brother, they were all very supportive of me. They're like, you know what? If you feel like you can do it, then go do it. But I mean, I, I really feel like there was a part, there, there was a time in my life, probably a six-month span, where, you know, I, I was probably the only person that believed in myself um, before I started playing. Because once I started playing, everybody thought, you know, maybe he can do it. Um, you know, after Abilene Christian, when he throws seven touchdowns, people started thinking, you know, maybe, maybe he can do it. Maybe yeah. he was right. And that's why I think it's so important to have confidence and a belief in yourself. And that's what I preach to people because there's always, no matter what you do, whether it's in business um, whether it's in sports, whether it's in school, uh, in relationships with people, uh, there's always going to be people that tell you that you can't accomplish something or do something, and you might be the only person that believes in yourself to do it. You don't. You're not going to have people that say, you know, hey, I, I didn't have people pat my back. I think believing in yourself uh, is a is a huge thing. But I mean, I also I, I had a great uh, support system for me as a person. You know, I, I like to. I feel like I proved them right, right. You know, for sticking with me and being there with me. So, And you also proved it to yourself because after, like yeah. you said, a lot of people would give up at, at certain points in that stage where you hit a wall so many times and then it's yeah. just like, well, there's nowhere for me to go from here. And they would give up and maybe, you know, just graduate and go get a regular job or whatever. But, you know, yeah. now you know, you know, that the hard work that you put in and the people who are around you, you know that that paid off. And now it's just keep going, yeah. keep going. So... Talk about now you're in the NFL. What's your mindset going into each season? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, you know, going into each season, I just prepare like I'm going to be the starter, uh, you know, whether I'm not, uh, whether I am or I'm not, that, that's my mindset. You know, I, I when I went into Denver's camp, you know, there, there probably weren't a lot of people that thought that, you know, I was the best quarterback coming in, but I went out there every single day and I told myself mentally, like, you're, you're the best quarterback out here, you know, go out here and prove it. In Minnesota, I went out there and I said, you're, you're the best quarterback out here because, um, 
you know, it, it's it's tough. I mean, as a rookie, as especially as an undrafted rookie, you're not going to have, like, you know, same thing. It goes back to believing in yourself. You're not going to have a ton of people in your corner. I try to have my own confidence and swagger about me. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I also didn't – I realized that I didn't really have anything to lose. You know, I, I could go out there and um, – and, and there's so many young – that's, that's another thing, man. There's there's so many young people out here today. Um, and I told my brother this the other day. It doesn't always have to be in sports. But as young people, there's no reason why we shouldn't chase our dreams right now because, you know, we don't have anything to lose. We don't have kids. A lot of us don't have families. Um, you know, there, there's nothing to lose. There's everything to gain. I mean, we already don't have any money. So you, <laughs> might, as well, you might as well go after whatever it is that makes you happy and try to make your dreams come true. And for me, that was kind of my mindset going into it was just that, you know, I, I was a backup quarterback a year ago, you know, in college at Northern Colorado. And now I'm in Denver Broncos training camp. Like, I'm not supposed to be here. Right. But you know, while I'm here, I'm going to give it everything I have. I'm going to treat myself like I'm the best quarterback out here. I'm going to mentally be prepared every day. Um and just go out there and give it everything I have. Wow. No, man, that everything you've been saying, man, has has been definitely relatable and something that we can all definitely learn from. So, last question that I have for you, man, if you could go back and talk to your former self, or you could talk to one kid listening right now who maybe wants to start a business or yeah. you know go to the NFL, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or you know, and they have these people in their heads that are telling them they can't do it. Yeah. What would what would your advice be to that person? My, my advice to people that I talk to is as long as you feel like you're doing everything you can to get better to um, in, in any area of your life, whether it's sports, you know, business, education, whatever it is, as long as you feel like you're doing what you can to get better, then trust yourself. Don't let other people tell you that um, you can or can't do something. Trust yourself. Be confident because... I mean, at every phase of my life, whether it was middle school to where I'm at now, there's always been people that have, there's negativity in the world. That's the way it is. I mean, that's the way it's always going to be. People aren't going to sit here and coddle your dreams. They're not going to sit here and stand up for your dreams. And the things that you want in life, you have to go out and take. Right. Um, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't handed anything. By no means should I be here. Really, I mean, I, I credit a lot to my family, to God, um, to, for putting me in the situations. But I believed in myself. I was confident in what I, I could do, my abilities, um, and, and I knew what I wanted. The harder you work at something, like you right now, I mean, you're you're an entrepreneur, man. The harder you work and you put something into a business, the harder it is to let it go. Right. If you put hours and hours and hours and hours into your craft. And it's going to be really, really hard for you to just give up and let it go. So I put hours and hours and hours and days and years into, you know, ever since I was five years old to being a quarterback. Right. So at the end of the day, when it came down to the decision, do I quit or do I keep going? For me, there was never a decision. It was always just keep going because I put too much time and effort in this for someone to tell me that, you know, I, I can't be this. I can't do this with my life. You know, trust yourself. Be confident. Um, and never let anybody decide your value. Never let anybody tell you what you can and can't accomplish. Man, Kyle Slaughter, dropping Dang. some, <laughs> dropping some wisdom on. How old are you, Kyle? Twenty three, baby. Oh, twenty four. Just turned twenty four. Twenty four. Man. Well, hey, Kyle. I really want to say thank you for spending the time with us, for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge, man. So much at such a young Absolutely. age. Really appreciate you, man. And best of luck to you this year. Yeah, appreciate you, my man. You have a good one. All right, you too.